Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. This is an eight-part series on Exchange Server 2007. This is part six of part eight, and in this particular part six, we're looking at how to recover, maybe recover is a strong word, or how to mount a storage group using an LCR copy and mount points. So we're going to look at how to specifically um, redirect a, a mount point to another volume that has an LCR copy. You can find all my videos on Exchange Server 2007 on YouTube under the tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. You can also find me at www.itvideocoach.com for high quality downloads. Hey everybody, welcome to part six of this eight part series of Exchange Server 2007. How to recover a storage group using LCR. Okay, now, before we go any farther, it's very important that you all know to go back and look at part one, two, three, four, five, six in order, because in particular, in this demonstration, we're using LCR, but we're using LCR with mount points, okay? So if you've never worked with a mount point before, part six may not make any sense at all to you. So make sure you go back and look at those. Now, if you're already a mount point expert, I guess you could probably dive into part six and make perfect sense. Not that there's anything that complicated uh, about a mount point, but it's just something that you know you should be aware of. So try to watch all the videos in order if possible. I'm gonna try to throw these together in one contiguous video up on www.itvideocoach.com. You can also find my videos on YouTube under the tag Grizzamore. That's G-R-I-Z-Z-A M-O-R-E, and I'm putting more and more out there as much as I can every day. Please make sure you check them out. There's some good stuff out there in a lot of categories, Active Directory, Exchange, uh, MCSC 2003 core stuff, Server 2008, the whole thing. So be sure to check it out. Well, without further ado, this is the one we've been waiting for, so let's check it out. So we left off. We have a dismounted storage group. Uh, you can also purposely dismount over here with those options and right-click and dismount. Uh, but when we killed our database in part five, if you go back and watch part five, we purposely killed that volume that had the original storage group. So it, after a little bit of hitting it, it came back and told us that it's mounted. We do have a healthy copy. So what we can do is we can go out there and go ahead and see if we can recover uh, this storage group. So what we need to do is close the exchange management console. And we're going to go to the exchange management shell. Okay. And from the exchange management shell, we can actually recover the storage group. So we need to, uh, from the commandlet, recover the storage group. This has to be done from the command shell. There's no other place you can do it. It's a pretty simple command. You just type in restore storage group copy. And if you think about what's going on, uh, we have an LCR copy, right? So we want to restore the copy. We want to make sure the copy becomes something that's a usable copy that we can actually point to. And we have to specify the identity. And the name of that storage group is storage group three. Okay. So that copy is on the other drive. So we're going to recover that. Okay. Now the other thing I want to talk about before I click enter on this is this whole concept for both LCR and for CCR, they both support what's called the transport dumpster. Uh, the transport dumpster resides on the hub transport server. Whenever you're sending messages through your exchange organization, things are going to get queued up on your, your hub server. And we keep a copy of the mail that's coming into the hub, and then we can take that data and play that those pieces of mail uh, back into the log files whenever you go to recover a storage group, either for LCR or for CCR. So those two different types of recovery both support pulling mail from the transport dumpster. Okay, and the commands you can use for that, uh, I'm really not pulling them up right now at this time, but there is a max dumpster size uh, commandlet that you can run. It's max dumpster size per storage group. And what we can do is set the size limit. And there's a uh, setting for time, okay? Uh, the default time for keeping messages in the hub server is seven days. The default database size is 18 megabytes, okay? 
So if you want to modify the length of time we keep things in the transport dumpster, or we want to you know, make it a little bit larger, uh, we can do that on the hub transport server role. So even though we're on a mailbox server right now, that's something that I would do on the hub transport server. Now just keep in mind in this demonstration, I have the CAS, I have the hub, and I have the mailbox role all installed on the same box. So, you know, that's very important because we have them all configured on one box. So, uh, they do recommend, Microsoft does recommend that the size for the transport dumpster uh, be 1.5 times the largest piece of mail you would send. So, if your average largest piece of mail that you would ever send is 10 meg, make it 15 meg. The default is 18 meg, but you can change it to whatever your needs are. So, just be aware that that's going to take place when we go to do this right here. When we go to rest restore the storage group, that's going to kick off the default transport dumpster. Now, if I wanted to turn it off, I set those two uh, commandlets to zero, the max dumpster size and the uh, time uh, commandlet, okay? So we'll just hit enter on this, and we're going to see if we can restore that storage group. And we're going to say yes to that to pull from the dumpster. Now, keep in mind, I might get some errors here because I don't really have anything out there to pull. Okay, so it created everything we needed, right? But not all logs were successfully copied because I don't really have anything. You know, I've only sent a couple of pieces of mail. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just type in these basic commands here. We have the max uh, d u m p s t e r s i z e size. Put the mouse out of the way here. Size uh, per storage group. So it is a per storage group parameter, okay? And then the other one is the max dumpster time, okay? So you have a size and a time for the transport dumpster and that lives on the hub server, so that's important to note. And you can modify those on your hub server. We're going to exit out, okay? So we've restored that copy, that LCR copy, so now what we need to do is figure out how to get the database moved around. And this is where the mount points come in. So we're going to right click on my computer. Very easy to do, not, nothing complicated about this at all. Go back to uh, manage and we're going to take a look at our disk configuration. So if you remember back in the earlier videos when we set this up, we had the two volumes. Okay, We have the original copy and the LCR copy. Okay, so all we have to do is go back into our disk management and here's our volume. We're going to take a look at the LCR copy. This is the original volume that's been purposely deleted uh, to prove the uh, action of the LCR recovery. Here's the other volume. We're going to right click, go to change drive letters and paths, and we're going to, to re we're going to remove this path that points to the mount point for the LCR copy. Okay? So that mount point's now been removed. The empty folder still lives upon the C drive, but the pointer to it has been taken away. We're going to go back in, and we're just going to redirect our drive letters and paths to point back to the original live mount point. So we go to storage group 3, okay, and click OK. And now this is pointing, the original mount point storage group 3 is now pointing to the copy. And just to avoid any confusion, we'll go to the properties of this volume and change the label to storage group 3. And that way everything matches up exactly and we kind of are like back to where we were because everything that was on the original was copied to the LCR copy. The empty folder that was pointing to the original storage group 3 is now pointing to the storage group 3 copy, with the one that used to be the copy, and everything's back the way it was. Uh, I hope that makes sense, uh, not to confuse anyone there. So uh, I guess I could show you just real quick, if we go to the file system, you don't see that as a live copy anymore because that mount point was removed. So we don't see the little icon anymore. So this is the only live mount point that we have and it's now pointing to what used to be the LCR copy, which is now the live copy. All right, and all we got to do is close this and the last step here is just to go back into the Exchange Management Console, and we should be able to mount that database. So here's Storage Group 3. We can see the copy status has been disabled because we don't have that copy anymore. The database has been dismounted, so we can just mount the database. We can use the Action Pane and mount that database. So we're going to mount the database.
and it is mounted. And of course, we do not have a live copy anymore. Okay? So we no longer have an LCR copy. We'll do that in part eight. Now in part seven, what we want to do is come back and make sure that we have mail flow reestablished. Okay? So that concludes part six, how to recover your storage group using LCR with mount points. Okay? Come back for part seven, we'll test the email flow out. And then in part eight, we're going to then reestablish a new LCR from that now up and running uh, database.